When it comes to Inkscape, there are a lot of tools at your disposal, from the standard tools right the way through to the extensions, the filters, the path effects, even the path commands, and of course, there are going to be a few little features that slip by you, as they did with me. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics, back with another Inkscape tutorial, and today I'm going to be going over the hidden little features that you might have missed when learning how to use Inkscape. Now, I have got a few of these from Dr. Mo himself, that is Martin. He's an Inkscape developer, and I'm going to leave the link to his channel in the description because he is really a great guy and a great youtuber so i strongly suggest going and checking him out as well and that way you can find out what news and features are going to be coming up in the next update of inkscape but without further ado let's get started with today's video now the first one i wanted to go over is the dropper tool now, I have been using the dropper tool for quite a while and I still did not know about this handy little feature. Now, as you can see on screen, there are four shapes, a circle, a square, a hexagon and this curved rectangle right here. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this red color and I want to put it on to any of these shapes. Well, you go to the dropper tool which can be found right here, or you can press D on the keyboard. Once you have, you can still see the bounding box around your selected object, which means now if we go to, say, the blue, we can change our selected object to blue. We can change it to light blue, or we can change it to purple. This is how the dropper works. But did you know that you can also hold control and then use the color that is already in the box that you selected and paste that on every other object. Now the next one is the space movement bar. What I mean by that is normally in order to move around the canvas like this, you will press in the scroll wheel. And then as you're pressing in the scroll wheel, you can move the canvas wherever you want it to be moved but did you know you can simply hold on to the space bar and with the space bar pressed it will do exactly the same next are groups of nodes when it comes to groups of nodes as you can see because this rectangle has curved corners you can then select all of them from one side hold control and selecting a node you can move it away and towards without it skewing the rectangle but did you know as you can see right here you have all of these arrows this is because i have this button right here selected which says show transformation handles for selected nodes this allows you to resize the group of nodes that you have selected. So as you can see, the blue nodes are the ones that I have selected at the moment. And by using these arrow keys, I can now increase the size while leaving everything else as it is. But you can also select the nodes again and get the rotation handles. And now you can move the rotation handles in exactly the same way you normally would using the select tool as long as this button is pressed these arrows will appear and you can make any changes that you want and you can still use the modifier keys with these arrows just like you normally would so holding shift you can increase the size of both opposite sides at the same time you can hold control and just increase the size of one end and so on next are guidelines 
Now, normally you can bring a guideline down like this, and this little dot on the line is your anchor point. I have done a video on guidelines before. You can click on the link in the top right corner if you would like to watch that right now. But this is pretty much how you use the guidelines. You can then use snapping to snap that onto the surfaces that you want so you can make sure that everything is lined up exactly how you would like it but did you know with any object that has straight lines you can also convert the object into guides for example let's take this square right here if we come to object scroll down and go object to guides it has now used the dimensions and the geometry of that square to create four different guidelines. You can even do this on more complex shapes like this hexagon, for example. Again, object, object to guides, and now we have something that looks like this. Also, please be aware that curves do not work. If we take this circle, for example, go object, object to guides, the circle will just disappear and no guides will appear. Next is selecting under. Now, as you know, you can select the shape that is on top when you have a group of shapes all layered on top of each other, but you will not be able to select what is underneath, just like you can see right now. These shapes are underneath the rectangle, so I cannot select them. However, you can hold Alt, and with Alt held, you can now cycle through all the shapes that are underneath. Alternatively, this is a little feature that I didn't even know about, but you can hold Alt and use the scroll wheel instead. And as you can see, we now get a clearer image of which one we are selecting. And once you have selected the right one, release Alt, and it will automatically select it for you, allowing you to make any changes that you want. Templates. Templates can be used by going to File, New from Template. Either when you're booting up Inkscape or when you choose to create a new project. This is the window that you're going to get. And of course, they are all categorized between print, video, social, screen, shape builder, other, and custom. Now, when it comes to custom, this is where you can add your own. Normally, you will be able to double click on any of these and it will give you all the dimensions that you need. However, you can set up your own. So if you come to your document properties, which is right here, you can set up all of your document properties. As you can see with mine, I am set to 2000 by 2000 pixels and I have the scale of 3.7. Orientation is portrait, but because we are working with a square, it really wouldn't matter either way. Now, of course, you can also include the guides, grids, the color, the scripting, the metadata and all the licenses all this will be included then once you have all the settings that you want you can come to file and scroll down to save template now you can add the name for the template you can add an author which would be yourself the description and any keywords that you want to add now do not select set as default template unless you want all of these changes to happen across the board so for this, I will just add basic, click save. And now with that saved, when you come back to new from template and then go to custom, as you can see, the new template is right here. Next is another feature that I didn't even know until recently. It's duplicate transform. Now, when you normally press Ctrl and D, you will duplicate the shapes or a group of shapes that you have selected at the time. However, if you grab that duplicate and then say I was just to 
turn it ever so slightly like this. You can then hold Control, Alt and D. It will give you a duplicate and it will add the transformation that you made to the last one. And if you keep hitting D, you can create some really cool patterns. Now this works with everything as well, not just rotating. So with this done, I'm going to duplicate, decrease the size. And then when I do it again, Control, Alt, D, it will decrease the size again. And as you can see, you can get some really, really cool effects. Give it a try yourself. Get another little feature that I didn't know there was a shortcut for is the transform keys. I think we all know about selecting an object and using the arrow keys to move it left, right, up and down, of course. But did you know that you can use the square brackets to rotate? in 15 degree increments just like this and did you know that you can use the keys to increase or decrease the scale well now you do so there you have it my friends a few little features that you might not even know existed there was even a few there that I didn't know existed and I have been using this app for years. So have a play around with them. I know this has just made my life a whole lot easier. So of course my friends, give this a thumbs up if you liked the video. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. And let me know in the comments if there's any of the little features that you know of that you think I've missed. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.